and into your homes. We are enacting a mandatory curfew effective immediately. You are not to leave your homes until further notice. Please vacate all public areas and head back into your homes. This is your final warning. Failure to comply may result in bodily harm and maybe even death. For your safety, everyone is ordered to go back into your homes and await further instructions from His Majesty King Asylus. This is your final warning. America's number one source for news with Tom Novak. The world is bracing for an inevitable war between the American alliance, the Middle Eastern alliance, and China. American forces have convened in preparations for a war with its former allies in Israel. King Asalas has said in his only public statement thus far regarding this new conflict that, and I quote, the Middle Eastern Alliance and China must now renounce their sovereignty and become a part of the new kingdom of America in order to avoid a massive full-scale war that will likely result in an untold number of human casualties. The immense loss of life is totally unnecessary and can be averted with simple terms of surrender." End quote. China's President Wei swiftly responded to King Asilus' statement with accusations of betrayal of an agreement made before the Great Revolution and says China will never surrender to America or anyone else. King Hussein of the Middle Eastern Alliance has also denounced King Asalus' demands, stating the Middle Eastern Alliance is prepared to die fighting America rather than surrender. Well, no one knows for sure what triggered this climactic turn of events. The Great Revolution was fought and won with America in alliance with China and the Middle East. It is unclear at this juncture what exactly took place that has caused King Asalus and America to turn against its allies. For an analysis on this troubling news coming out of Israel and the Middle East, we turn to a trusted voice of reason, Charles Thomas. Charles, what on earth happened? Well, Tom, it seems the jury is still deliberating on this matter. But my sources say the king learned of China's dealings with the Drax while they were supposedly allies with America. Perhaps our Chinese friends and allies were not so loyal. I'd like to add too, Tom, that my sources tell me that President Wei himself met with the Drax commanders to make a deal with them and sell out America. I have no proof of this, of course, but it does seem like a good theory, given the sudden about face King Asilus has taken since the Great Revolution ended. Hold it, President Wei appeared on this show and told the world China was behind King Asilus in America 100%. Forgive me, but I think one has to question your sources here, Charles. Obviously, people need to be skeptical of all the things mentioned in the news these days, right, Tom? I'm not sure what you mean, but let's move this along, shall we? America's military is moving into a particular part of Israel, just outside of Megiddo. You understand, a lot of Christians worldwide see this move as the beginning of Armageddon. Should everyone be alarmed and start preparing for the end of the world? <laughs> you say that as if it would be a bad thing, Tom. No one knows why the king is assembling his forces there. But I am more inclined to think that he is readying an assault on the Middle Eastern Alliance. 
That seems more plausible, since Israel is, honestly, the only ally we have in that. That is close to that region at the moment. My guess is that America will try and take the Middle East first before going after China. Many experts think that simply will not be easy to do, even with all the advantages America has over the Middle East. What do you think King Asalas' motives are with these moves? Do you think he will try anything diplomatic or simply start bombing his former allies? All I know, Tom, is regardless of what King Asylus' motives are, the end result will likely be more death in this world. Death will come on a scale we haven't seen. And we have seen an incredible amount of death already. It might as well be Armageddon, honestly. So people truly ought to prepare for it. I believe this in my heart. He is coming and will bring the apocalypse with him. New Kingdom Radio Theater. Are you getting sick and tired of hearing about Ted Bundy, Maura Murray, the Golden State Killer, West Memphis Three? Check out Strictly Homicide Podcast, a true crime show that discusses cases out of the natural state. And even though it's Arkansas, we won't be covering the West Memphis Three or the Boys on the Track anytime soon. So check us out on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Podcoin, or basically wherever you listen to all your favorite shows. You can also find us on all social media platforms. And as Mr. T would say, I pity the fool that doesn't listen to Strictly Homicide. King Osiris met with members of his High Council arriving on the White Horse in Israel to formulate plans to conquer the Middle East and China. Lords Oreb and Shelley proposed using nutrition, bio-warfare, and alien technologies taken from the Drax to cause their enemies to turn on themselves. Though part of the American Alliance Army was in Nikita, to war with China and the Middle Eastern Alliance, their standoff quickly dissipated. China and the Middle Eastern Alliance simultaneously retreated from any military engagement and returned to their homelands without firing a single shot. As all this was transpiring, Silas was visited by his longtime guardian, the angel Raziel, who told him he was entering a world where no one unworthy could possibly survive, essentially triggering the tribulations. said that Silas had an important destiny to fulfill before mankind could enter the next phase of their fate on Earth. Never fear to do what is just to Silas. The aggressive provocation of your former allies has caused them to retreat. That was a smart play. Your maturity and integrity will strengthen when it all starts to feel right, but that will take some time. Your heart, it is telling you to question why this necessary war with those you once entrusted. Throughout history, the events that truly mattered have always come at the expense of benevolence, even solidarity. This is fairly different, however. 
for what is at stake is something of immense significance. Just remember, with all the assurance I have provided you since you were a child, you are at the threshold of a global change. Everything has to change, and nothing can nor should feel right until that change is complete. And when exactly will this completion happen? It is not for me to say, and certainly not for you to know. Not at this time, anyway. Everyone is questioning my motives. I can't say for sure how long people will tolerate my erratic behavior before they all turn against me. I won't be able to complete my destiny if that happens. Indeed. The world is destined to turn against you. Especially since they see you as an instrument of change. No one is comfortable with coerced paradigm shifts. They see you as the personification of the world's deviation. They will not simply turn against you, Osiris. They will burn with hatred for you in their hearts. The very people you wish to free will be the ones who yearn to cut your throat. This is hardly comforting, Raziel. When you asked God to grant you understanding of the world, did you gain this? Yes, without question. And when you submitted yourself to Him, to use as a tool among people, to use for whatever purpose or calling He bestows upon you, did you not say yourself you would accept whatever God sends you to do? Yes, yes I did. I'm, and I meant every word of it. Well then, you must proceed as the Lord has asked of you. You will receive your directives through many forms, and only you can decipher them and authenticate them as coming from our Father. Only you have that ability. Now, others around you cannot see or understand these things. They cannot because they are not meant to. Do not allow your rage or discomforts to be the reasons for their sufferings. They will suffer for other reasons though the world will become hopelessly confused and blame you anyway. You will not bleed from these arrows of blame. Do you understand this, Osiris? I do understand this. I accept my role in all of this. But I need you to help guide me. I need another source. I need to know what my enemies are thinking, planning, doing, wanting. When you awake in the morning, Osiris, there will be a book unlike any before. This book will be in your personal study in New Eden. The pages will be full of secrets. All the secrets everyone has. Friends and enemies alike. Use the secrets in the book as you embark upon your campaigns. Is there a failsafe in case the book is discovered by anyone other than me? The pages will appear blank to eyes other than yours, Osiris. Only you will be allowed to read the words on them. But remember, these secrets are for the purpose of having you succeed in your next campaigns. Nothing more. Our Lord will be very angry with you if you use these secrets for anything other than what you were meant to do on this earth. Do you accept this? I do accept this, Raziel. Thank you. Thank you. Announced to everyone since the conclusion of the Great Revolution, King Asalis was visited by the Alpha Omega and was given a directive to go out into the world and conquer it. Essentially, King Asalis became the white horse of the apocalypse. 
to bring war and conquest to all lands on Earth. This, of course, was against everything the king had set out to do when he became the ruler of America. He had visions of bringing peace into the world to free humanity from the grips of the evil monster group. But since his freeing of mankind, the world became a much more hostile and dangerous place. The expansion of the kingdom had reached all four corners of the world, and the Silas had to find a way to conquer all remaining countries on the planet. This put him at great odds with his allies. The American alliance was on the brink of war with the Middle Eastern alliance and China. In a meeting with his war strategists, Lords Oreb and Shelley, King Asylus stated his demands for how the war effort had to be initiated. Sir, I think it would be wise to make a move on both the Middle Eastern Alliance and China simultaneously. We have plenty of resources and can use the Drax needle ships for which they do not have an answer for, and make this conquest swift. You make it sound so easy, Lord Shelley, but I assure you, it won't be. The Chinese also took some of the Drax technology and do have an answer for those needle ships. How do you know that, sir? The Chinese have never shown they have anything that could counteract our weapons. Lord Shelley, it surprises me you insist on underestimating the Chinese. They are immensely formidable. Do not, for one second, think they haven't thought of every scenario also. They were our allies for a long time, and I taught them some things. I now wish I hadn't, but honestly, I only taught them what they needed in order to be useful. Now they could use all of that knowledge against us. But don't worry, I've got many other tricks up my sleeve. We just have to be a little patient, and then we can make our moves on them. Sir. <laughs> Perhaps Lord Shelley can head up the campaign to steer China one direction while I lead the charge against the Middle Eastern Alliance. I happen to agree with Lord Shelley that we meet our targets simultaneously. We certainly have enough soldiers to fully engage them on two different fronts. I think what you both are not understanding is that this is exactly what they want us to do. Why, sir? They must know they cannot fight us head on and beat us. We have way more firepower and soldiers than both of them combined. Because they still have nuclear weapons. Listen to what I'm saying. They want us to meet them on two fronts. They'll lure us into strategic places and bottleneck our soldiers where they'll be vaporized by nuclear bombs. Which they'll have underground long before we ever get there. Sir, are you saying they are willing to sacrifice their own soldiers and eradicate their own lands to blow up our troops? That's insane! Of course it is. That's exactly what they're banking on. If we think they would not do such a thing, they will plan on us facing them on two fronts and booby-trap their fronts with nuclear bombs all along the line. And when we are making progress and push a bulk of our troops into the area, they will detonate the nukes on us. We won't know where they are, and they'll be underground anyway, so we wouldn't be able to use our net ray to stop them. Well, that's what they are thinking anyway. Okay, so we shouldn't meet them on two fronts in an all-out military brawl then. Lord Shelley, I think what the king is suggesting is that we do shank them in a way they would never see coming. We make them think that's what we are going to do, and allow them to plan their own suicide nukes, but we'll actually be readying something quite different. Am I right, your majesty? Indeed, Lord Oreb. But this is going to take some time and ingenuity. They need time to start moving their nukes underground at strategic places, and they'll be very careful about it. Also, we need time 
to start manufacturing enough poison to eliminate a billion Chinese. <laughs> Jacob, we need to always have the banquet hall ready for when the king does come home. This is your main responsibility. And when I went by the hall, it looks like it hasn't been maintained in a few days. This is simply unacceptable. Well, I have been pretty busy. Father has me working on other matters. Besides, I don't think he'll be coming home for another week. Something big is happening in the Middle East. Yes, I know. Everybody knows. It's all over the news. Listen, you are not busy 24 hours a day, so set aside at least one hour to make sure the staff is up keeping the banquet hall. Don't you think that would be a waste of food, Mother? Do not concern yourself with that. That banquet hall needs to be ready for the king the moment he arrives. Is that understood? Yes, Mother. And if the staff can't do it, fire them all and hire help that can do the job. As you wish, my queen. If this kid is going to be king someday... <gasps> Spartan guards. If they're sweeping in the holes, that means Asylus is coming home soon. We have a lot to get to and not a lot of time to do it all. Where should we start? Let's start by sweeping the top three floors. All listening devices have to be disconnected or removed. King's orders. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want anyone to hear him and Lord Shelley getting it on. <laughs> sure, like especially the Queen. Can you imagine if she found out about how hot and heavy those two get? Ah, uh, no one would believe it. Lord Shelley likes... Hey, okay, let's cool it, Thomas. Let's stop talking about it. Oh my god, a Silas and Lord Shelley? There could be devices in this wing. My mistake, Mendez. That son of a... Ugh, I'm going to kill that man. Just shut it already, Thomas. Look, the banquet hall is up ahead. Let's begin the sweep there. Hey. Thomas, come take a look at this. It looks like a hologram speaker. Huh. Why would there be one of these in the banquet hall? I don't know, but it's very strange. These are deception devices. We better tell Prince Jacob, put it in your bag, let's go.
I know we did not have the best friendship before King Hussein, but I think now you understand why it was necessary to be extremely careful with Osiris. I admit I did not trust you, President Wei. I was completely and blindly loyal to Osiris, and all it got me was an alliance mired in turmoil. The time has come for us to finally join the forces, don't you think? I believe we simply have no other choice. What do you propose we do? <sighs> well, first look at this garden. It is so beautiful. Our planet is a very beautiful place. I believe. We must do whatever is necessary to preserve our world. I agree. We must use deception as motivation to save all we can. I mean, Osiris promised to free humanity, but instead, people have become slaves, even more now than before. I believe it is up to us to stop this madness. Even if it means we destroy half of our lands to do so, destroy half our lands? I don't understand what you mean. That seems very contradictory. You see, King Osiris believes we think he wants to demonstrate his military might. He believes we are planning to fight America using technology we retrieved from the tracks in Antarctica, and honestly, we do plan to use them. But I think what we should do is use our nuclear arsenal. But they have that net ray. Our nuclear missiles are useless against them. If we launch them into the air, then yes, they are useless. But if they are on the ground, the net ray will not be able to neutralize them. Do you understand what I mean? You mean make a minefield of nuclear bombs, and when the Americans cross into those lands, detonate nuclear bombs and destroy everyone, including our own soldiers. That is insane, President Wei. You are proposing suicide bombing on a much bigger scale. Of course, I also believe Osiris thinks we are planning this. Well, if he does, then this conversation is for nothing. He will have an answer for it. We should let him believe this, Ken Hussein. We will have our construction crews begin the tunnel project. This will convince Osiris we are planning the suicide nukes. But we have an advanced steel boring machine which will dig deep underground and is undetectable. We will secretly tunnel beneath the desert, beneath Jericho and the West Bank, right under Jerusalem. You want to destroy the holy city from underground. What will this accomplish? It will cripple the entire Christian world and put America and King Osiris into the tailspin of chaos. Then we attack them on their land. You've been listening to The Rise of King Asylus, Episode 31, Secrets, starring J.V. Torres as King Asylus, Michael Hoggett as Raziel, 
Meg McDonald as Queen Rebecca. Alexander Yang as President Wei. Mark Rios as King Hussein. Stephen Fisher as Lord Jeremy Oreb. Shane Maester as Lord Anna Patricia Shelley. Lynn Spencer as Spartan Mendez. Tim Long as Spartan Thomas. Derek Graziano as Man on a Bullhorn. Paul Mahoney as Charles Thomas. Don Rosinski as newsreader Tom Novak. And narrated by Sergei Brezhnikov. This episode features the song Gunslinger, Going Down Swinging by Baby Sinister. Download the music of Baby Sinister on Bandcamp.com today. For more information about the cast, the music, or other contributors to this production, please visit us at www.theriseofkingasilas.com for a full list on our Season 3 episode page. And now, a word from our podcast friends. Hi, this is Minna from True Crime Finland. Ah, Finland, so peaceful and quiet. There isn't even any crime there, right? Wrong. Join me every two weeks in discovering the dark side of the land of a thousand lakes. From legendary and infamous, to the lesser known and forgotten Finnish cases, the podcast will be sure to offer something for everyone. Find True Crime Finland wherever you get your podcasts. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theatre in Baltimore, Maryland. Copyright 2019. And stay tuned for episode 32.